Hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. My name is Shane Olson and today we are going to be sculpting some expressions. I really love that kind of exercise where I can take a character and push it into different expressions. These expressions are from, I believe they're from uh, Princess Frog, the, the Disney movie. Um, it's from an, a hand-drawn animator named Bill Waldman. I just barely discovered him. I, apparently he's worked at several different studios, including Don Bluth, um, Warner Brothers, all sorts of different studios, and he does some fantastic work. So I wanted to uh, try and make a kind of a base head, just in a neutral pose. And then I want to use layers and put it into different expressions and see if I can uh, push through them. And I don't know how many I can get done, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Layers are interesting because you can only put one layer per subtool. So you kind of have to keep all of the objects in a single subtool if you want to. I was thinking about morphing between them, like adjusting through the different layers. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hey, welcome guys. Hello, hello. Yeah, I thought they were fantastic. They're really, really good. Okay, so let's start by making this head. I wasn't gonna make a neck, I'm just gonna make this head. And we'll see how it goes. Good old Nightbot dropping the information. I will be at the ZBrush Summit this year. It happens, well, I leave Thursday and then I'll be there till Sunday. I'm really excited about it. Okay. I'm trying to think about how his head is shaped. Kind of reminds me of the frog on, um, oh, what is it called? The one before Ichabod Crane, Mr. Toad, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride from Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's make some some eye sockets. This guy is super simple. And then I'm gonna Z remesh it to give it some um, edge loops. That's what really helps with your expressions some nice loops. I'll pull his kind of jaw up and forward and out. Got these really big kind of cheeks. Hello, hello. Yeah, Chuck, I think it is. It is, I believe it is the uh, the the one from that has a little bit of a different structure to his face, but it's very similar. Hey, what's up, Ian? Like work. Oh, thank you very much. Hello, hello. Okay, let's uh, let's just start. You know, I I used to try all these tricks with the mouth, just getting it to function in different ways, and now I just tend to just push it in there. And he's got a quite large kind of an upper lip, and we'll get that going here in a second. But I think what I'm going to do is just go right into Sculptress. Let's make sure my stroke is adaptive is turned off. Hey, you know, Honda, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Let's go a little bit more dense with this. Okay, I think that'll work for now. I don't want to go too dense. It's dense enough. Okay. Hey, Sean. Awesome. That's great to hear. Maybe even more. Let's 
just going to inflate this upper lip a little bit, bring it up and out. Okay. Same thing with that bottom lip. Okay, I do want him to have quite a mouth cavity. Like not just a shallow one, but an actual mouth cavity that has some depth to it. Hey Justin, how are you? Welcome, welcome. How, how is everyone today, by the way? It is definitely fall here in Utah. The leaves are changing. It's uh, The weather's getting cooler, which is nice. It tends to get rather warm here. Utah's a desert. So in the summer, it gets very warm. And in the winter, it gets very cold. So just... Spring and fall, they're not very long seasons, but they're super nice. I'm gonna eat some lunch, that sounds good. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Kind of want to get some eyes in here to react to them. I'm only supposed to get the rest of my parts for my PC. Nice. It's always fun building a new PC, isn't it? It's kind of like the, you know, being being a car guy, but instead you're a computer guy. Kind of a nerdy, <laughs> nerdy thing, which I love. A months worth of rain this week. Goodness, hey poison, that's good to hear. I remember the rains in Seattle. Sometimes I liked it, sometimes not so much. Okay, I'm gonna split this these eyeballs off for now, but I'm going to merge them back in eventually. Go with a light green for these eyeballs. Whoops, eyeballs. Come on, there we go. Oh, nice. I just got hit by lightning about a month ago. Oof. It, it just like zapped your machine? Like your house got hit? That's brutal, man. Oof. It's going a little. I just. Slowly increase the density on my Sculptress Pro. Kind of like focusing a camera. Now, I feel like this head, like the forehead part of it up here needs to be shallower. So I'm just going to smooth it down. And on the sides, smooth that down. It was just a little too big. Okay. TV PS5, oh goodness. Wow, that's brutal. Looking forward to learning how to sculpt in real. Life. That's great. Yep, it's always a fun exercise to do. There are a lot of traditional sculptors in my course learning how to do it digitally. 
I've always wanted to learn hand sculpting, like traditional sculpting. I just I've never really done it much. Just a little bit here and there. Okay, so let's see. What do I want to do here? I think what I want to do is remesh it. Is there any option to save your project quickly? Um, I I just save it up here. This is a Z tool. You just hit save as right there. That's the fastest way, but I usually save Z tools and not Z projects. I believe it'd be more interesting. It, it is, but it's it's also less forgiving, right? Because you don't have undos, you don't have symmetry. But it's fun to have the smell of the clay and the feeling it with your fingers and all of that stuff is good. Why remesh? Because um, currently my mesh looks like this. And if you want to make expressions with your head, you want to have good topology so when you push and pull it around it it follows in a uh, in a way that's predictable and you know so it'll make nice creases and things like that <clears throat> wanted to sculpt as well as a kid was huge into the dawn post mask always wanted to make one there you go be fun Okay, yeah, this is just, it's a bit too dense is all. Okay, so how I want to do this is I'm going to take it a little more dense. I guess I could just flood fill the whole thing. The density, that's this lower slider. On This is my user interface. If you're new here, um, I give away my user interface and my brushes. For free over on my website. My website is my logo is hidden. Where is it? Bunk. There it is. Yeah, this is my webpage, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can go over there and grab my user interface. It also comes with this handy menu where you can access the most um, most used menu items from the tool menu. Bring it up right there, and I like to put it, uh, assign it to the back button on my pen. So it will pop up right underneath my pen, no matter where it is, which is super nice. And I give you all the instructions on how to install it and how to set up that hotkey so it works. I took a stone sculpting course when I was a kid. It was part of some summer program, the local community college. Wow, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I, my friend Michael DeFeo gets into marble sculpting and it just, it was really like, it's really interesting. Hey Julie, how are you? And you also teach an online course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. You can check it out over there if you want to learn how to create characters like this. Okay, I want to really kind of cut in before I get too far. I really want to make these cheeks puffier. So I want a definite kind of a cut right here. Just as, as an experiment. Mm, trying to decide if I like that or not. I basically just kind of want it to go change directions from straight right here. down to this poofy cheek area, Get a little bit bigger. And then we'll get his mouth closed and do some other, some exper or some more expressions with him here in a minute. 
Jeez, Sean, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Sean, if I could ask you to do me one little favor, if you log into the course and go to the very first course, the, the one, just the 3D Character Workshop course, in the dashboard over on the right-hand side, it says, leave a testimonial. I would love if you could share that with everyone. That would be amazing. Thank you very much. Oops, where did that go? I appreciate it, thanks. <clears throat> that goes for anybody else, any of my other students that enjoy the course. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Sometimes these eyeballs are stretched, and I was just going to stretch them in the actual uh, layer in the expression. So we're going to try that too. Okay. Pull these, whoops, not that, these eyeballs a little closer. Okay. Trying to decide how if I like that or not. It's like a little emoji head. <laughs> frog frog emoji head. Reminds me of those bouncing heads from Spirited Away a little bit. <laughs> Wonder what the rule law comes to sculpting style is fan art of actors, actresses, or musical artists. Would you be able to sell 3D prints of those? I mean, it's it's tricky, right? Because if you just do a small, a very small run, especially if you get permission from the person or work out some kind of licensing deal, um, but or like to, if you're just going to 3D print them for yourself or a few friends or something like that, but to actually make a business out of it, that's where it kind of gets sketchy because you don't own the rights to that actor or actress's personality or, you know, likeness. Um, you can do it if it's kind of a parody, possibly a caricature of that person. Um, I've seen that a lot. And because that, that, that falls under copyright law where if you're doing a parody or a caricature, that's why when you see caricature artists at like amusement parks, they'll have like Whoopi Goldberg and that, you know, like up on their little screen. But like doing a realistic likeness of a person, um, yeah, that, 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 get, that can get a little sketchy. especially if you do a large run of them. <laughs> and that goes for any like, not just celebrities, but any cartoon characters too. Like I probably wouldn't, well, I, it's not I probably, I wouldn't make 3D prints of this and sell them um, unless I spoke with bill and worked something out because this is his original design and i don't know if it's actually owned by disney or not and that would open even more of a can of worms you know because disney is well known for their cease and desist telling you to knock it off marvel will as well so will lucas they're all owned by Disney now, so it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> I don't know if I want to have a specific cut right here, maybe a little, and then smooth it out. Okay, I'm going to do some eyelids. I'm going to keep the eyelids separate. I just use this topology brush. You probably saw me make it. If you've been here before, you know how my eyelids go. I need to 
need to draw enough or have enough poly loops down the length that I can actually close his eyes and stuff. So I'm going to put one, well, I'll put one across here in the center to give me double at least. And then I'll just add some thickness, click on the surface. Off transparency, grab this color and fill it. But I want to split it off into its own sub tool so I can subdivide it. Okay, so these are the eyelids. Let's go in there and adjust them a little bit. Again, I want to kind of try and put these expressions in layers so I can morph between them back and forth. And if I use the layering system, I can't have multiple subtools. So I'm trying to do everything I can to get them ready to then merge together. So I'm going to subdivide this. Well, let's turn off creases and then subdivide it. Maybe a couple times. And then, is that what I want to do? Yeah, that's a good density, I think. Okay, that will be our eyelids. That, that way we can kind of stretch them around and push them up into the head and do different things. And then these eyeballs, I'm going to subdivide them once. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave them low because I'll sub I'll subdivide his entire head in the layer system. So we, we can keep these low and then subdivide them. So maybe I need to go back and not have these subdivided as much. I have to think about it. <laughs> like I have to think about the future and how dense I want these if I subdivide them. Okay, so not quite as dense. Just kind of raise him up a little bit. Now he looks angry, frog. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to... The reason I'm deleting the low resolution is because I'm going to um, add the resolution back on after I combine everything. So I think what I'm going to do now... See, this is a very dense Sculptress Pro mesh. I'm going to go in and make edge loops or, or uh, poly loops so I can make myself a better uh, posable base head. So I'm going to duplicate this head, hide the original, and then we can go in with our masking and create poly loops. Poly groups that are poly loops. So I kind of like to start with the eye and then just mask a circle. Hit Control W, which will put it in its the first poly group and that'll be the the center of the eye and then I can hide that and then come around the outside of that and do a loop like a circle and that will be another one let's make it a little bit thicker you just want to make sure that you get all of the ones along the edge masked you don't want to have any rogue poly groups control W again hide that one a little larger with my brush and this will just help the Z remesher follow these guides because I say keep groups and then it'll follow the guides and this one I want to go right up to the edge of that eye socket doesn't have to be perfect but just as close as you can again control W hide it now this one I can do one of two things. I can either make a, I can make a mask out of it, like a, like the Incredibles masks, like a mask. I think that's what I'll do, is I'll make it come across here, go down, and then across, like this, and then this will be its own group. You you kind of have to be careful because you don't want to you don't want to have super tight triangles like this. 
So let me see. This might be better to do, just to bring this down like this. And it'll depend on, and maybe leave this, or or even give it, gosh. Yeah, we'll try this and see what it does. Let's hide it. Now if you have an island like this, and an island like this, what you can do is you can, you can hit um, auto groups, and it will put each mesh island in its own group, and then you can hide this one. We can turn on double, just so we can see the inside. You still retopple your characters in Maya? Are you able to get animation ready topology? I still, if I'm going to put them through production, like actually animate them or send them to a, you know, my a rigging department to then be animated, I will absolutely do it by hand. Yeah. Yeah. Z remesher still will not give you a solid uh, retopology. This is just for posing inside of ZBrush. So I'll do the same thing with the interior of the mouth. Make a circle, hide it, and that'll be the back of the mouth. And then for this one, I'll go right up to the edge of the, the lips right here. You just got to be careful not to mask like the head back there. So I'll, I'll just go right up to the edge of this. Yeah, this would be more for like proof of concept. You know, if you want to see the character in different expressions, what would he look like without going through the entire process of pushing it through rigging and animation. It's kind of a, it's that whole mantra of fail fast, if you've ever heard that before. Um, like if the character is not working, it's much better to try it out like inside ZBrush with the expressions before you send it all through the whole process. You can also look at it on, from this side. Okay, so that's kind of right up to the edge of that mouth. I, I want to kind of go more like that. Okay, control W, hide it. And then we do another one for the interior of the mouth right here. I kind of like to bring it out to this apex where it curls back up around. And you'll see why I'm doing this here in a minute. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm trying to go for is I'm trying to keep the same width on the mask all the way around because that will make my Z remesher a little more predictable as it tries to follow that poly group. Like if you go from thick to thin to thick again, it's gonna have a rough time. Okay, it looks like, see this little bit right here? Looks like I missed. So you wanna make sure that you, you hit that. Control W and you can inspect the edges. See that there's one that I missed right, right there. So I'm going to undo that and make sure I get it and then hit control W and inspect the edges. Make sure I got them all. Okay. And hide it. Do it again. Keeps rolling all the way down. Okay. So now I got to decide, do I want to have one loop all the way through that goes up and over the nose? Um, or just a, a loop that maybe cuts halfway through this bit right here. Since this is kind of a thick nose, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do half. So I'll do one more loop around here. And hopefully that gives us a good solid remesh. So it does get thick underneath the nose, but that's okay. And I can kind of take it out to the lip too. Okay. Again, looks like I missed one right there. Looks like there I have a rogue one. See that floating one back there? I'm gonna have to fix that here in a minute. I'll show you how to fix that. Okay, control W, unhide it, and then let's unhide everything. 
And now this is what we have. And we want to check it for uh, poly groups that are too close in color to each other. So see, these are, these are both green. Yes, this is lighter and this is darker, but they're both green. So what I like to do is isolate one, hit Control W again, and that will put it into a different color. Okay, now what I have is I have this little rogue piece. So I'm gonna isolate this orange poly group with the little island, and we're gonna do an auto group. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put that little, that little rogue face into a different poly group. And then I'll unhide everything. Otherwise, if I try to isolate these together, it's gonna, it was gonna show the whole head. So what I wanna do is I need to decide which of these two groups I want to put this into. It looks like it would fit into the green group the best. So what I wanna do is hold down Control plus Shift and click on the dot that is shared between the two groups, and it will isolate just this one. Now I can hit Control w and put it in the same group, and there it's fixed. Okay, that's all you gotta do. I'm gonna save this now. Now I could keep doing edge loops, but there's a good chance that it's just gonna give me what I want. You don't wanna go crazy overboard with this stuff, just enough to entice Z Remesher to follow the edge loops that you want it to do, okay? So we're gonna do a save as. Hey, what's up, Art? How are you doing? Okay, so... Na, 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 na. Let's do uh, Bill Frog Expressions. Oh, one. Okay. So here we go. Z remesh time. Let's try it out. So Z remesher, keep groups. I like to turn smooth groups down a little bit. Um, like maybe 0.5. We'll see how that goes. Um, this target poly count means uh, that's in thousands. So that's 5,000. I kind of want to go higher. I'm going to go 8,000. Um, and that will give that will give Z remesher more polygons to work with. And then you can always reduce it after that. Learn that from Joseph Drust, who's also going to be teaching a workshop at the ZBrush Summit this year. So he's going to be there. Super excited to see him again. I think the last time I saw him was at the um, these New York Toy Fair, where we shared a cab over to the Toy Fair. That was fun times. Okay. So it did give us some decent loops, but you can see how it kind of, it kind of, it kind of croaked <laughs> through through this area right here. Okay, so I'm gonna try something else. Okay, um, what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try and add this red group to the orange group and see if it gives us a better result. Oh, we don't want to be green. Okay. Anima Sculptoris, nice name. I don't know how to work with your style, but I love seeing your figure super clean, very cool. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Okay, so again, I could do another loop through here. I could do another loop over through here. Yeah, it really, let's just try it again. Sometimes you just go back Try moving your groups, different things. I don't know what it's going to do through here now. So in, basically what I'm saying is I'll, I'll let you decide, Z Remesher, what you want to do through here. And yeah, that get, that's giving a better result. And this is a better result too. But see when, when two masses come together and tries to squeeze it through here, you do get a little bit of weirdness. Um, but it's not bad at all. So now that we have this, which is nice and clean and cool, we can reduce it. So let's do, um, let's do half. Another thing you can also do, uh, this is something I learned from my friend Steve James. Um, you should check his stuff out on Twitter or Instagram. He posts a couple places, but he does some really great stylized females all the time. And what he, uh, he showed me was you can delete the back of the eyes and the mouth and it will give you a better result sometimes because you don't really need to have a back on these if you don't want to. So you could delete that. Um, I, I tend to want to keep mine in case I ever want to 3D print it. 
But um, if you want a better result in those places, you can delete those. Okay, so we're gonna do half and also keep groups. Hit Z remesher and it should reduce it more. There we go. Do it again. Okay. That is probably about as low as I wanna go. And I still have one weird pole right here, which I'm not a huge fan of. Let me try one thing, and I don't know if it's gonna help or not. Yeah, let me go back and just try one thing with this group. Okay, we're gonna make a, a new group out of this that goes around like this. I don't know if that's going to hurt or help, but we're going to try it. And again, you don't have to be perfect with your edge loops when you do this. Because it'll clean it up. So now let's let's hit Z remesher and see what it does. That's not bad. Okay. So this is, as, this is about as low as I would want to go anyway. This is pretty good. Okay. Compared to this versus this. And now, sometimes between the groups, it will leave these little peaks. And you can't really see it until you turn off the wireframe and then you hit dynamic subdivision. And sometimes you'll see these little kind of peaks through here. And with Sculptress Pro turned off, you don't want that on anymore. You can just go through and kind of clean things up. Okay, and now that we have that, we can combine everything. I can get rid of my original. I'm done with that now. Actually, I want to keep the color though, because when you Z remesh, it gets rid of the color. So this is not filled. That's why my um, my thumbnail over here is still white. It's because it hasn't been filled with color. So I'm gonna fill it. And now, hey, what's up, Ashley? How are you doing? I'm making a crazy frog. Well, trying attempting. <laughs> okay, I got to give this guy a tongue and maybe uh, maybe adjust his throat polys a little bit. What's going on, Ashley? What's new? What's cool? Yeah, frogs are good. So what I was going to do with this is I was thinking about putting each expression in a layer and then being able to morph between them, you know, like like kind of animation style. And then, um, but in, you know, you know this, in doing so, I have to have every object in the same subtool. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do and give myself some edge loops that I can then pose. Excuse me, goodness, okay. And then let's do it. Let's do a tongue. And if you guys don't know who Ashley is, she's another streamer here. I'm gonna go a little lower. She streams most of the time on Wednesdays when she streams, right? You can catch her here. She does the most amazing monsters you've ever seen. I still don't know how you do it, Ashley. How you do like uh I just make different folders for sculpting a teeth and eyes and toggle them on. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, another thing you can do, and I'm going to give a shout out to Reillusion here, is they made this free plugin called ZBrush Pose Tools. You can go over to Reillusion and grab it for free. And this is like a pose bank. And it will put, it will put a layer on every single subtool that you have. And then as long as this is like hitting record, well, it is it is hitting record, and you basically record the pose into every layer of every subtool. So it it works really well. I've tried it; it works really well. Um, and then you can switch between poses right here. The only thing is you don't get to really morph between the poses, like with the the layer slider. That's kind of what I'm after, and this is more of a snapshot of the pose which works really good for um, getting like green, green lit from, uh, if you want your poses green lit, it's a great way to do it. The day I'd understand the software's UI, I'd be happy. <laughs> it's, once you get used to it, it's not bad at all. 
I'll just tell you right now. And I, I have adjusted the user interface so beginners will have an easier time understanding it. So I put all of my most commonly used brushes down here and my most commonly accessed um, items here. So it's just much less um, overwhelming. And then I also have a most used menu system right here. So this is all of my most used things out of this very long tool menu right here. This is very long and it, yeah, you're right. It's like way, um, what am I, what, what did I just say? Overwhelming, it's way overwhelming. So yeah, I just kind of trimmed everything down to just the things you need. And I give away this user interface for free over on my website. You can go get it right now. It's just uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you can grab it if you want it, along with these brushes. Okay, so I wanna color in his tongue. To be kind of a, an, a desaturated dark reddish, something like that, I think. Yeah, no problem. Hope it helps. Okay, so now I can squish all these together. I think I have all the bits. I just need to color in his, he doesn't really have teeth, does he? Yeah, just color in the interior of his mouth, a darker green. This is just poly paint. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want to color his tongue. Just the head. Oh, come on. Let's hide the tongue, shall we? There we go. And since this is poly paint, it's not going to be super sharp along the edges. I just try to find a poly loop and just paint down that poly loop. And it'll, it'll give kind of a, a fuzzy edge. How do you select gr brushes are in the lower part? I messed up and had to reinstall your UI after inadvertently switched move for an IMM one. Well, yeah, you can, well, that's the fastest way is just to shut ZBrush off or you can go to preferences and go to um, config and then restore custom UI. That will just restore everything as if you restarted ZBrush. Um, but if you, physically want to change the brushes that are down here for something else that you use more often, I actually have a video over on YouTube explaining exactly how you can adjust these and how you can adjust that custom menu to be however you want it to be. So I highly suggest checking that out. It's just 3D Character Workshop over on YouTube. Um, Neil, if you, Neil might post a link here, but you can't post links in YouTube, I don't believe. So if you just go to YouTube and search for 3D Character Workshop, you'll find it. I also tell you how to um, <clears throat> make your own custom menu like I did. So you can check that out while you're there. Oh, the one, got the one. Oh well, I can't do it there. Okay. Let me check it out really quick. I'll just show you which ones to, to do. So here's my YouTube channel. Um, how to customize your user inter interface right here. And then um, this is the directions on how to install my user interface and stuff. And let's see, and this is the one to do your own custom UI or your, sorry, your custom menus and how to customize your UI there. This is the same. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, no, no links in YouTube, sorry. All right, I'm gonna merge this down. Merge down. 
merge down okay now that now it's all in one tool now I think we're ready to pose let's take a look we still have all our edge loops in our poly groups um, I don't know that I want them I those are meant for the Z remesher but now that I have them I might get rid of them we'll see see how it goes Sometimes when I have a mouth like this, I just like to have a poly group for the lower mouth and then one for the upper so I can pose them. And then for the eyelids, I like to have those in their own. So I think what I'm going to do is set that up. So I'll put everything in their own poly groups like this and then mirror and weld them so they're symmetrical. I hope I didn't weld my eyes together, did I? I always want to test that. Okay, I might put these in their own separate sub tools. And then put these, oops. Okay. Those are in their own, the tongue's in its own, and then we'll just kind of go like this. Well, let's hide the tongue first. Put it in its own like this. Let's do a different color. There we go. That'll make it much easier to pose. Okay, and at this point I can add real subdivisions. I might as well. I can do dynamic subdivisions, but I might as well add real ones in case I need to sculpt with more, more geometry than I have right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit apply. On this dynamic and then divide a couple more times up to looks like two million that's simple enough I should give him eyes I'll give him eyes in the let me see I'm trying to decide how I want to build his eyes out if I would just want to paint them on there or give him an iris like that's a separate object hmm what do I want to do I think I'll just paint him Yeah, let's just paint them on there. Why not? Gosh, it's a big decision. <laughs> okay, let's go blue, dark blue. They're really small. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Okay. So I'm going to warp the heck out of this head and it'll these irises will probably warp with it. <laughs> thanks thanks for the inspiration. Okay, now that I have this black dot or this dark blue dot painted, I can I can use mask by color because I don't want to paint on the white. So you can go to masking and mask by color, mask by poly paint, and it gives us this menu and you can drag one of these swatches over and pick like that and then when you're done you just hit OK and it does the masking right there okay and then I'm gonna inverse invert that mask I don't know why it did it <laughs> did that with the tongue I don't really care about what's happening down here uh, we're just gonna focus up here and we're gonna switch over to our airbrush crank up the RGB intensity just a little bit select a lighter blue color uh, maybe a light. And you can always hide the mask if you want to see all the other colors with it. See underneath the masking, it says view mask. You can hide it. It still has the masking applied, but you can check the colors against like your green and stuff. So what I like to do is paint the color down here and then go... Um, a more saturated color, a brighter color. Let's reduce the RGB a little bit so it doesn't come out so fast. Just give us a little highlight there. This is where the light is coming down and hitting the bottom of the iris. And I like to keep it shaded up top like that. So that's kind of what his eyes look like now. And then we can do 
like a black, but not 100%. Switch over to the hard edge brush. And give him a pupil. Something like that. And clear our mask, isolate this eyeball. Well, looks like we have to isolate them both because I made them different poly groups. And then we're going to change over to material, grab the toy plastic material right there. That'll give us our little highlight. Uh, we're going to fill the object with that and then switch back to RGB so we don't accidentally. Um, change that material on anything else. We only want it on the eyeballs, and then we can switch back to skin shaded four, and then show everything. And there we got our our eyes with our highlights on them. Okay, are we ready to begin yet? I believe so. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to mask off this and bring his eyes up forward just a little bit more. Was a better whoops yeah we got the symmetry on I was thinking it was off for some reason okay so now that we have this head I think he's ready for posing this is our default head welcome back Ian okay so I'm gonna save this as is as O2 Okay, and then we're going to go into the layering system. Layers. We're going to add a new layer. Now, I'm going to tell you something about layers for a minute. Um, well, for so with layers, you, you have to be ready. Like, you have to have your character completely 100% where you want it to be before you hit layers. Because layers, um, it's kind of like putting... Uh, it's, it's restricting you from accessing other tools inside of ZBrush as soon as you add layers. Okay, so it'll record sculpting, it'll record poly paint, but you can no longer like slice or weld or any of that stuff. And that that's kind of goes the same with subdivisions. As soon as you add subdivisions, you're locking yourself out of some of the tools. Okay, so just know that with layers, it's it's kind of the same. Okay, before I put a layer on here, I want to do a little bit more poly painting just to give him some, uh, so he's not so flat here. Okay, um, let's grab this color and just add a little bit of darkness underneath his mouth here. Some fake ambient occlusion up in his eye sockets here. Well, I'm painting his eyes too, so let's go like this. Darken those up a little bit. Let's give them some gradient, gradient action. And then we can take this color, this green, lighten it up, maybe some yellow, push it to yellow a little bit. And just give us give him a highlight on his nose. Maybe on the brows here. Just to kind of break up that even green tone and make it a little more interesting, you know? Maybe the top of his head. And maybe on lower lip, just a little bit of a hit right there. <laughs> yeah, he's happy but angry. He's like, <laughs> Okay, so now we have some interest, maybe a little bit on the cheeks. We could go a little red on there, but I think I'm just going to keep with this yellow. Just going to brighten them up a little bit. Okay, now we're ready. <laughs> Save it one more time. Expressions really, really make your characters come to life. And so that's why I love to do it. Okay, we're going to add. And once we have this layer, we can rename it. Um, let's just name it 01. That's <laughs> accused of quiet quitting. That's hilarious. Okay. So let's start with, um, we can, we, let's, which one should we start with? Maybe this one? Yeah, let's do that one. That's, that seems like the most difficult to do. 
and his eyes are kind of stretched up. We're going to be stretching his eyes. He's going to be squash and stretch character, car, cartoon character guy. Okay, so here we go. Super happy guy. You know what? Before I do that, I'm going to roll his eyes down so I'm not stretching his irises out so much. And see, this is this is another thing you get with layers is if you hide objects, your poly paint will kind of turn to garbage for a second until you unhide everything. So I'm just isolating his eyes, centering the gizmo. Yeah, watermelon. So I can move his eyes down here. Okay. He's looking super angry right now. Okay. Now we can kind of adjust up here. I could even mask off down here. You can go to lower subdivision levels, but not with a layer. A layer kind of locks you out of it a little bit. Okay. Kind of want to pull his eyes back. There we go, that's better. Shrink him down. And then isolate his eyelids and hide them a little bit more. I just want to get just a little tiny hint of them. See, I'm kind of wishing I made them darker. I think I can later. Okay. Mouth time. Let's get this pulled up. And this is really where those poly loops come in handy. And also when you're using layers, you'll want to turn off RGB on your smooth brush. Because if you do go down in levels and you smooth it and then you go back up, it's going to make, make bad things happen. It'll give these weird little like that watermelon looking checkered thing that we saw before it will kind of do that something similar okay i'm just going to continue to pull this up and then when i get to a certain level i can use inflate again just make sure you don't have rgb on any of these brushes that you're using And it's going to save this on this layer. So this is kind of what I was going after. I'm not done posing this yet, but I just want to show you how it kind of, you can kind of morph it. Okay, come on. You can do it. There it goes. See, look at that. <laughs> so from neutral to smiley guy, that's where, that's where it gets really fun. Okay, make sure your recording is on 100%. I don't, why, I don't know why it says 101. Oh, that's the name of the layer. Okay. Duh. All right. I'm going to pull this down, isolate the tongue for a second. Uh, can I not do that? Oh, recording got turned off again. Okay, it'll warn you if you accidentally turn recording off. <laughs> There's watermelon back. I just wanted to pull this down without affecting the tongue. You can use topological with a range of three to kind of get, let's get down in levels. this closed a little more bring this up and out I really want this mouth open big
Okay. Let's move this tongue down now. And we can kind of shrink it up a little bit. Well, let's make sure we're in the center of it. And shrink it just to make sure we don't mess it up. And we can even put that little tongue slit in there with our detail brush. Let's isolate it for a second. It, the, the color really throws me off. I wish it would stick around. Okay. And inflate this shut. Okay. And we can even take this entire thing and roll it back a little bit. So put it here. Go like this. Here, I'm going to even turn his head. Turn off symmetry for a second. Turn his head like he is in the concept there. Okay, now he's asymmetrical completely. Pull his lip down even more and inflate it a little bit. And this is where we can start adding asymmet asymmetry. Asymmetry. <laughs> pull this up and pull this forward. There we go. A cool candy holder. Work. <laughs> oh, I got to put his throat in there. Yeah, it's got. Goodness. I was just going to try and kind of push that throat down just so he's got one, a little bit of one anyway. Okay, so there's that pose. And we can test it. Well, let's pull this a little down a little bit. Funny how it puts the toy plastic material on here. <laughs> okay. So it's it's really fun now to turn off recording and then morph. <laughs> like ah you can actually go reverse. This is the reverse <laughs> of happy. <laughs> okay, so what we can do now is go back to zero. Back to here and then make another layer. And do another one. And we'll save this one as poses. Okay, what time we got? We're, we're only in this an hour? Okay, not bad. Okay, I kind of want to do that sad one up on the top right. That kind of like a what? Okay. So let's do that one. One with a closed mouth, I think, would work well. Okay. So let's start. We can turn on topological start and get this mouth closed. I'm just going to leave symmetry off.
because I think it'll give him a more dynamic pose. So you want to get it as close as you can. It'll start affecting what's above it. What's up, Woody? Um, you get it to a certain point, and then you have to switch over to inflate. Kind of inflate it closed, just very carefully, because you don't want to you don't want to inflate it forward. You just want to inflate it closed. So you kind of have to be very gentle with it. Don't want to make his lips come clear out in front, you know. Make his chin come forward a little bit more. Okay. So let's get his eye, well, let's center this and turn him, turn his head how it is here, kind of away from us. Okay. And then we can pose each eyeball. Let's go up higher resolution so we can actually see where he's looking. Let's see, did I center that? Yeah. So I want him looking right at the camera. And we can even turn on perspective too. To 85, so it's not so distorted. Okay, he's looking at us. Okay, and then let's do the invert eye, inverse eye. Reset the gizmo. Pose this eye. That's good. And again, his eyelids are kind of hidden. So not inflate, we don't want to inflate them. So we can hide those for the most part. And have them just barely, barely sitting out there like that. So there's a hint of them. There, I think that adds. And I want to mask off these eyes because I don't want to um, warp them yet. Okay. Well, I kind of want to mask off the lids too. Okay. So now his worried face. So these brows are kind of peeking up in the middle. They drop down on the sides. He's concerned. He's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll make this eye shape smaller. I know it's in perspective, but it's also fun to make it a little smaller than the other one. And you can just do that by not scaling down the eye itself, but just adjusting the, the eye opening. Smaller too. Also, you guys, I've reopened my acceleration program if you're interested. And what that is, it's just a mentorship where I give you feedback every week on the characters you're working on and give you advice on like career advice, portfolio advice not relationship advice. <laughs> but if you're interested, just uh, send me an email. You can either reach me through the contact area through the through my website, or you can uh, just send me an email at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Or if you're already a student of mine and you have access to Discord, you can message me there. And I'll tell you more about it. Right, number 
if I want to do that. I do want to pull in the corners of his mouth, but not that big. You guys are awfully quiet today. Usually I have like tons of questions happening. It's like, is this thing still on? <laughs> I found this on the web. <laughs> Siri answered me. That's funny. Okay, I think I need to adjust his eyes even more. You're in awe of the layer thing. <laughs> I'm just, just talking to myself. <laughs> okay, I want to push his mouth up even more. That's what I really love is just to see how far I can push these things. <laughs> Squish his head down too. Are you participating in the Zebra Scoped Off this Thursday? I want to, Chase. I'm going to actually be at the summit physically. Um, and both Paul and Ian said I could use their computers. So I'll you, maybe use one of them. But I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might be too engaged in conversations there because I'm it's people I'm going to be talking to people that I haven't seen in you know pre pre-pandemic so I'm really looking forward to meet seeing all those people again it's like family you know it's like Christmas it's my Christmas okay I'm starting to get this to peek through and I don't want it Are you trying that, Neil? Nice. I want these thin. And I want them to help the expression. Um. How would you text your character to put in your portfolio if you don't have access to Substance Painter anymore? Uh, I mean, you can use Photoshop. I use Photoshop for, or something like it, like Affinity Photo or something like that. Um, you can look at Quixel Mixer. That's another one. I don't know if that one's free or not. Um, but that's a, that's a really great way to make textures. Um, but yeah, like when I did the like say when I did the Overwatch skin, um, I just used Photoshop. I didn't use Substance. You you use a lot of layer trickery, but it's totally possible. That's the way we textured characters before Substance existed. <laughs> this is a fun one. I need I need to pose his eyes better though. Yeah, you can. You can uh, you can use Krita. It's just a little more difficult to use, but yeah, there's nothing nothing wrong with that. Okay. There, I just wanted him looking at the camera better. There we go. The eyes are so important. It's and it's hard to get them to work correctly um i want to get his cheeks higher
There we go. That looks more froggish. Um, how do we get in contact for the mentoring you mentioned? Uh, just just send me, well, if you go to my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, and you go to this contact right here, just click on this, and that sends me personally an email. So if you just want to use that, that's the, that's the easiest way. Okay, I don't like what I did to the mouth. I made him kind of happy instead of concerned. I also do, um, I do company workshops. So if you work for a company and you would like me to either come to your company and give a workshop or virtually give a workshop, I do that as well. That's a thing. And I've done them for Lego and Pixar and Funko. So if you're interested in that, you can also use that same contact to reach out to me and let me know if you're interested. I did a workshop for the Zbar Summit one year. Could you use the layers blend shapes? Absolutely, there's actually, you can use it with Maya. And I'm not sure if you can use it with Blender, but with Maya, you can actually use a plugin to push them over and it will plug them right into your blend shapes in, in Maya. It's really nice. And with um, Real Illusions Character Creator as well, you can, if you're using the edit, um, edit expression editor, you can use GoZ to push them over here, adjust them and push them back. It's really nice. Okay, I want to make this look to look good from other angles. It's kind of looking like garbage. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do some big warps with a big brush. Just to push that expression even more. I feel like that would make it so much easier. Thanks for explaining. Yeah, sure. Yeah, a lot of people use the blend shape stuff with Maya. Yeah, it's so much easier to create blend shapes with actual brushes than it is by moving, you know, even using the soft select in Maya and moving points around, it's difficult. But doing it this way and actually, po you know, using brushes to squish things around, <clears throat> it's easier. What's going on? Hey, quick question. How do you bend edges like pillar or a curb? Are you talking about like a bevel? Or I don't know what you're, what you mean. Are you talking about like, like a uh, hard edge surfacing, like a curb of a street going around a corner? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, so there's that one. Turn off recording. Um, let's rename this something better. Like, um, let's just do sad. Sad. We can rename this one happy. Okay. So if I go to the sad one and I turn it off, see it goes back to this. And since since this morph is linear, it's actually kind of warping his uh, his eyelid here, and the points are moving linearly, which is kind of strange. But hey, what's up, Jazzy? How are you doing? Uh, well, I don't do much environment work um but i can kind of show you how i would do it really quick so i'm going to change this to 03 poses since i added another pose and then i'm going to do a quick demo okay now these are both recording is off so i'm just going to take um and just append a a 
cube. Let's hide this, make this cube. Um, I'm going to replace it with my cube. Because see this cube has a pole? I don't want a pole. So as long as my gizmo is showing, I can click on one of these. And it will replace it with the whatever I click on up here. Okay, so if I was making a, a long object like this. Yeah, you guys, I am a sponsor of the ZBrush Summit again this year, which means I'm giving away seats of my course. I'm giving away three of them, one every day. So if you watch the ZBrush Summit live, uh, you can qualify for um, winning one of the seats to my workshop. And Reillusion is also a sponsor. Okay, so if I want to bend this, it's it's not going to work very well because I don't have enough edge loops. But if I grab the Z modeler and click on this edge, hold down spacebar, click on insert multiple edge loops, I can insert a bunch of them like this. Okay, now I have enough. And if I want to bend this, I show my gizmo, go to this uh, gear, and then I can just do a bend curve right here. And that puts a box around this. And then I can grab this little orange curve resolution and pull on it, and it will add these little dots, okay? This, isn't, this probably isn't the best way. There's so many different ways. Um, if you ever see Paul Gabery streaming or Michael Pavlovich, they're probably uh, giving you a better, better answer to how to do this. But now that I have these dots, I can start to bend this geometry, and I can bend it like this. I just move these dots up this way, like this, and then try my best to clean them up and make them straight. And that's kind of how you get a bend. Or you could like, you could model it, like box model it. You could do a curve. Um, you could do, yeah, there's so many different ways, but this is one way, just to bend it. Okay. Anyway, hopefully that helps. <laughs> okay, now back to our reg regularly scheduled program here. Um, let's see, what should I do? Which one? Oh, the angry one. We got to do the angry one. When rendering a toy sculpt, how would you render the eyes? Should you use a different piece for the iris separate from the eyeball, like a video game character? Um, so sculpted eyes are different, and there's several ways to do sculpted eyes. And one of those ways is like by literally sculpting the eye. Um, like David, the, you know, the statue David, look at his eye and how it's built. That's one way. Um, using live Boolean to physically delete the iris and make it like a cup. If you watch, um, I think a couple ZBrush summits ago, I did a video on how to make an eye and I use live Boolean to cut out the pupil and the iris. I'm trying to remember, Neil, do you remember if I have that video in the workshop that shows how to do a, a 3D printed eye? Anyway, you have to like, if you want it to show up in the 3D print, you have to actually like physically cut it out. Um, you can also just make a flat plane, like where you would paint the iris. You could do that. That's one way. And then just render that out. Okay, so... Yeah, that's what I would do. And make sure you get that little highlight. Like you can sculpt the highlight in there. That's another thing. Okay, we're going to we're going to make him angry. So let's go to layers. Add a new one. What time are we at? An hour and a half. Okay, I'm getting more of these done than I thought I would. It's a pretty simple head. Angry. Hey, Leonard, how are you? Okay, so yeah, let's make let's make this one now. 
Okay, I want to mask out these eyeballs. Grab my move brush and I'm just going to pull the material down. Let's turn on symmetry for a second. Just make him angry. I am doing well, thanks. <clears throat> Every day is a good day when you sculpt. <laughs> Yep, making him angry. He's so grumpy right now. Pull his mouth way down to the sides. Inflate him shut. Come in. Okay. Before I pull these eyebrows down anymore, I want to move his eyes to be aimed down more. So looking down and kind of this way, we can go up so we can see the resolution and dig it right in there. <laughs> I love when you're posing eyeballs when they're like all wall-eyed and cross-eyed and So it's going to be something like this. Looks like it's, what in the heck is it doing? Oh goodness, I think it grabbed part of it because it's symmetrical. That's what's going on. All right. <clears throat> it probably did the same to this eye, but I don't care. I don't think. There we go. Now it's not peeking out. Okay, I want to get the camera something like it's going to be like this. Okay, I'm going to put it about right there, and then I'll move the eye socket to match it. Okay, when you isolate stuff, when you have layers, it makes that weird color for a second. That's what's going on there. Okay, I'm gonna go down in resolution. I really wanna crunch these eyes. So I'm gonna get my mask lasso. I'm gonna turn off perspective for a second and mask these lips off so I don't affect them when I pull these brows down. Okay. A lot of posing is just mastering, hiding, showing, posing, or uh, masking. If you get good at those things, you'll, you'll have a much easier time when it comes to posing. There we go. It. Sometimes when you have something masked off and you're trying to use topology masking, it doesn't quite work. Okay. <laughs> He's like giving the sly side eye. I don't like what you're doing right now. I see what you're doing. Okay, and I'm going to bring these cheeks up. Kind of squinty eyes. He's not having it. And inflate. 
plate, this bottom lip out. Oh. To kind of help exaggerate that lower <laughs> lip. Uh, let's see, what can I do on my computer in order to have ZBrush run flawlessly because it kind of lags? Um, well, there's a couple things. The first thing is to keep your uh, resolution as low as you can when you're creating your characters. Um, like, when this is at its lowest resolution, it's, it's really low. Like, this is really, it's 9,000 polygons, right? I mean, it's just a head but um it's pretty low and if you're using like say uh sculptors pro you can you can decimate often to keep it low and you can also keep things low and use dynamic subdivisions right here well this is on my user interface but you can use dynamic subdivisions but if you're looking to get a more powerful machine and you're trying to uh, get more performance to work with zbrush better uh, ZBrush works best with CPU. It really, really relies on CPU. And it doesn't rely much on RAM or GPU. Those things don't really matter that much. So uh, as many cores as you can get and as fast as you can get with your PC, that'll help a lot. But don't... If you, if you have subdivision levels, don't delete the lower subdivision levels thinking that it will make it perform better because it won't. Leaving those subdivision levels actually helps a lot. It reminds me that I'm watching you, Wazowski. <laughs> Use W size in the document tab as well to reduce the size in ZBrush. Yeah, Casey, that's a good point. Like use uh, the scale, the scale master, or you can go grab my uh, my ruler file. I give it away for free. It comes with this ruler, and it is perfectly scaled to what ZBrush wants. How how ZBrush wants you to work. So you can see this grid. I actually work with Joseph Drust to get this to be the most optimal scale for ZBrush. Okay, and it's set to one-to-one -one size. Your brushes will work really well with it, and it will also help with the performance. That's a good, that's a good tip. Um, but otherwise, you can use the, the Scale Master plugin to um, get everything into the size that ZBrush likes. And also, one last, one last tip is, um, don't have dynamic subdivision turned on if you're using either Dynamesh or Sculptress Pro. That will make it lag like crazy. Okay. What's the best software for posing? Um, I pre-sculpt and use a base mesh. Um, well, I, I worked on Disney Infinity and every single character in Disney Infinity was posed inside of ZBrush. And just like I'm doing here, I'm posing it inside of ZBrush. But if you're looking for a rig outside of ZBrush, um, I've most recently been using Character Creator 4. And that thing is amazing. It's, it's like you can use the base avatar that they have. And if you use that base avatar as your base mesh, you get rigging and posing for pretty much free almost. It's so fun to play with. And work with because then you can just push your characters over there pose them and bring them back without having to do much when it comes to like skin weighting and rigging and all that it's uh it is not for mac as far as i know not yet anyway i think they're working on a version but it, it doesn't work for mac yet Pose this eyeball better. But I have a video coming out about Character Creator soon where I talk about how I use it. Okay. Now that I have.
have this. I want to bring. I, I I wish I didn't have his jaw jowls so low. It makes him look less froggish. Hey, what's up, Wilbur? How you doing? Thanks. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Do I want to do that? I think I don't want to do that. I think I liked it better when it was not the cheeks, so, when it was just like this. <laughs> okay. Right there. All right. That's a good that's a good mad head. And let's turn off symmetry and oops. Who's it? Why? Did the layer get turned off? What's going on? There it is. Okay. I wasn't on the right layer. Because what I want to do is go like this. And go like this. Get him into that, that pose. Let's do some more squishiness. Big brush, squish it down. Uh, if you make a sculpt and pose it, you can auto rig. Uh, so no, you would make you would make a character in an A pose, then you would send it over to Character Creator, and then you would pose it over there, and then you would bring it back. And what's nice is there's a free pro uh, there's a free plugin right here called Pose Tools that you can get from uh, Real Illusion that you can save poses in these slots here. And basically what that'll do is that'll put a layer on every single one of your subtools. If you can see right now, I just have one subtool and I have a bunch of layers on it. Um, the reason I'm doing that is so I can morph between them, but this is more like a snapshot pose. And you can, you can put them in here and it's really, really fun, really nice. Um, I've been meaning to ask, did you get CC4 by itself or with recommended plugin? I think they have two or three. So yeah, there's one called Headshot that allows you to match the, um, the, the base mesh with your mesh with very few points. You just basically say, okay, the eyes are here, the ears are here, and then it will just try and match it as best as it can and it works really, really well. And then there's one called iClone that allows you to use your phone as a motion capture device to capture your face and then drive your character's face with that motion capture. It's it's amazing. I haven't got into it too much, but I've seen some demos on it and it looks yeah, it looks incredible. So I yeah, it's it's addicting. It's really fun to to play with. So there's a couple characters that I made during my um ZBrush live streams that I went and got the base mesh and, and matched it to those characters. And it worked really, really well. Let's see. I just want to make a couple tweaks to this. His forehead is too big. This song's appropriate. <laughs> Another Manic Monday. There we go. This character is similar to the characters that graffiti artists use. Yeah, kind of. They make some really pushed, like, frown faces angry faces with these big brows and stuff yeah I know what you're saying okay 
I lost his chin though. I gotta bring that back. Okay. It's really squished up there though. To kind of accent that frowny face. That's fun. <laughs> Making expressions is some of the most rewarding things you can do with a character. <laughs> hey, UAB, welcome. All right. Okay, that's good. So let's uh, let's test the morph with this one. It's really fun. So you can turn off recording, and then roll this down. It's like why? <laughs> I don't know what's up with this uh, this eyelid like twisting as it morphs. See the other one's not doing that. I don't know what what's up with that one to make it do that. <laughs> and then it's kind of fun to. Uh, <laughs> to try and like combine them, it usually doesn't work, but it's fun to see what it, what happens to them. And then like sad, you can crank this one. There's sad again, and then happy. Ah. <laughs> Isn't that how you'd make blend shapes in ZBrush? Absolutely. Yep, that's how you do it. The sad one gives you nightmares. This one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to it's fun to see him warp and bend and blend. And let's save it again. Okay. Do you speak with college classes? Um, I do, but I charge for it. It's not, yeah, it's not uh, voluntary, if I can <laughs> be, be clear about that. So, but yes, I do. I actually teach at a university, a local university. I'm, I'm teaching there tonight. Okay. But it's, yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, if, you, if you're interested, just reach out, let me know. Okay, let's see what time we got. I need to use the restroom really quickly. Um, but I will be right back. I'll be as fast as I can and we'll do another one. Maybe we'll do this, uh, this koi one <laughs> or this one, this kind of... Oh, maybe, maybe this one with pursed lips. That one will be difficult to do. So I will be right back. Please don't leave. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back.
Thank you, Mr. Stone. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. It looks like he's going, ooh. <laughs> let's do that one. So another layer. And you can even start, you, you can duplicate. Let me do that. So let's do, let's delete this one. And then we can start with this angry one and give him a kissy face. So if I go to duplicate, you can duplicate it right here. <laughs> and if you have them both going, it will like double it up. <laughs> So you don't want to do that. Okay. So start with angry and rename it. Um, I'll rename it. Ooh. Okay. So then we can start with this because he's already got this mad face going and we just need to make him go. Ooh. So it's easier to push polys around when it's low resolution. What does it say? Turn off what? Oh, it's not recording. There we go. Come on, record. Sometimes this is hard to get to go. Oh, I need to be in the highest resolution. All these little all these little check boxes. Okay, there we go. Go down in subdivisions. There we go. Okay. There. All right. So if you're having troubles with it letting you do what you want to do, just check those things. Making sure you're at the highest subdivision level, wherever you have your layer. So I just masked off the eyes because I don't want to accidentally move them. Smoothing this out as I go a little bit. So I want to separate these lips open. <laughs> that's, qu that's quite the expression right there, right? That's funny. He's like, yeah. <laughs> really want to get this the the crease out of the corners of his mouth because he's he needs to make that ooh face just get this all even as much as i can you can see how packed the geometry gets Bring this out. It's going to stretch all this here, so we can bring all this kind of closer to help it out. That's kind of what happens with your face, right? When you make the ooh face, it kind of drags all this up closer to your mouth. Okay, I'm just getting it all in position to where I can... Uh, inflate it and create the lips back. How difficult was it to break into the industry and what advice would you give to someone who's trying to break in? Well, I broke into the industry way, I'm old, I'm an old guy. I'm, I've been in the industry for 25 years now. So 25 years ago was a different industry than it is now. But some of the advice I can give you is the same. Um, one of them is is networking it really helps who you know okay um that's that's just like with any job that's a big thing because if people know you and respect you and understand your personality and how you work and and how um you know how your performance is on the job then they'll recommend you and you'll get a, a much have a much better chance of getting in but if you're not in yet that's kind of difficult. So what you can do is you can go to conferences like the ZBrush Summit and meet professionals and talk to them and get to know them. 
I've met a lot of my students in person and I've recommended a lot of my students to people who have reached out looking for modelers. They're just like, hey, we, we have this project. Do you know of any modelers uh, that, that would work for it? And, and so, some of them are here on the chat right now, <laughs> I believe. Ian, are you still here? And Nahanda, are you still here? Yeah, so I do give preference to my acceleration program students. I'll just put, I'll just put that out there. But um, okay, so that's, so networking is huge. Um, the next thing is you need to have a portfolio that shows that you can do the work that they need you to do. That's the purpose that a portfolio serves, right? It's not like when people ask me, what should I put in my portfolio? It, it depends on what you're going for, what, what company you're going for, what kind of work you want to do, what kind of work they want you to do. And you need to show them that you can do it, right? So if you're going to be doing game characters, um, you want to show them that you know how to do game characters in your portfolio, which means you need to show your uh, retopologized mesh with good UVs and good baked maps and that kind of stuff. If you want to get into toys or 3D prints or things like that, you need to show that in your portfolio. Um, just basically you need to show them that you know how to do what they need you to do make them feel confident about hiring you. So that's kind of how a couple, a couple pieces of advice. Kissy face is the hardest, is the hardest thing to do. It's kind of looking like those aliens from Mexico at the moment. <laughs> okay. I want to pull this out. I hope that helps. Most of the people I know in the industry, other than the people that I've worked with, I've met at conferences like CTN, which is creative. What does CTN stand for? Creative Talent Network. Um, Lightbox Expo is a really, really good one. Um, Zebra Summit is a really good one. What are the differences you might see in portfolios for film and TV versus portfolio for 3D printing and toys? Well, 3D printing, you're gonna see, you should see uh, characters that, um, they're decimated, they're in a pose. They, you even should show a 3D printed character, not just a render of one. Um, and, or like a toy that has articulation. If you know how to do articulation, toys don't always need articulation but it's good to present that you know how to do that, you know, not, not articulation, but that you know how to 3d print and you need to, um, just pose your character. So it doesn't fall over, for example. Um, so it looks good from every angle while it's posed is another one. Definitely helps. I never thought of going to any expos to make connections. Yeah, that's that's where I've met most of the people I know. I mean, I've I met almost all of Disney feature animation modelers at those conferences and their concept artists and their rigging guys like Sergi. I met him and like Dylan Ekren and yeah, there's so many people that I've met there and um, actually, you know, a lot of them I consider my friends. So it's yeah it's uh it's really good to go to those okay this is a tough one that i'm running out of geometry for because i want to do like this whole thing and i i can't really do it <laughs> this one might be one i might have to bail on Sorry, I just got to concentrate for a second. Yeah, this isn't really working too well. 
Um, so a film, a film portfolio should have characters that have multiple UV, uh, UV islands, not islands. Um, what are they called? They're called UDIMs. I can't remember what that stands for, but it's like multiple UV sets for the character. Yeah, angry puffing. <laughs> I, I picture him going, ooh. <laughs> Do you offhand know your bit rate? I don't. Yeah, I, I'm afraid to open it because I don't want to mess up my stream, but I'm not sure. I think I stick most, mostly with the defaults. Is it bad? You dim, oh, you, that makes sense. You dim and mention, yeah. And then um, film characters usually use uh, subdivisions where games do not. Games rely on normal maps. Um, film relies on displacement maps rather than normal maps for the detail. Yeah, I'm not really happy about this one. Looks that looks weird. Uh, you know, let me look. Let me look. Stream. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of locked out for now. Hmm. This is fine. I'm just getting ready to test stream for the. Oh, gotcha. For the scoped off um you know you you should probably get are you gonna stream to YouTube because they have some default settings for like streaming to twitch or YouTube or whatever you're wherever you're gonna go you can um there are some YouTube videos on which settings are best as well where I kind of learned it. Yeah, I'm not a, this is my least favorite pose right here. So cool, thanks for the info. I've heard that sculpting a character from the Pacific, specific studio you're applying to can be a good way to stand out in the episode. Uh, no, I wouldn't agree with that, no. Um, I would do a character in the style of but for example, I did a skin for Overwatch. I have zero Overwatch characters in my portfolio. Um, but a lot as I have to add to that, I did meet their lead character artist at Zbar Summit, and I've I talked to him online and stuff like that before before I ever did that. So again, networking. Um, but no, you don't have to have a character because then you're kind of pigeonholing yourself, right? And other studios might be turned off to that. They might go, oh, it looks like you really want to work for Blizzard or whatever, but you're applying to like, you know, Toys for Bob or something, you know? And they're just, they're just like, well, when is this person going to want to leave and go work for Blizzard? So I wouldn't necessarily put characters just for that studio in your portfolio. But similar, do similar ones. Uh, the accelerator is the mentorship. Yeah, Justin. Just a different name for it. Yep, there's a few more spots open if you're interested. <laughs> I really don't like this pose. Not going to lie. I'd have to really work on this one. That is my time. I think I'm going to go. I hope they don't use this one as a thumbnail for the video. <laughs> it's like an angry fish. All right, you guys, let's see. Turn on off recording. I'm going to go back to zero on this, this one. See, with this, I'd probably start over because I don't like that one. But there's one. 
That's angry. It's so fun to watch. Here's sad again. Oh. This one reminds me of uh, Mr. Toad the most. And if this was, if I was really doing this, I would spend a lot more time on these poses than a couple minutes, you know? <laughs> so. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. This was a lot of fun. Um, I stream every single Monday at 11 a.m. If you want to come join me every Monday, I'm here sculpting away. And as always, I give away my user interface and my brushes for free. You can go get them over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And you can also check out my other offerings over there. I offer a course and I have a, a right now I have a Patreon membership and um i have a hidden acceleration program that's not on there it's a mentorship so if you are interested in that please feel free to contact me or if you want me to teach at your university or at your uh, company or whatever do a workshop uh, reach out to me for that as well so all right you guys thanks everybody thanks for watching have a wonderful week and i will see you all next monday all right cheers everybody Take care. Happy sculpting.